Hi, this is Mike Messier, and this is a kind of a co-promotion of myself and William Summer of the Doomer Bloomer podcast and subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. So depending on whether you're watching us here on subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel or listening to Will's uh, typical outlets of the podcast, Doomer Bloomer podcast, of which I was a guest on a few months ago, you, you'll either be hearing us and seeing us or just hearing us. Uh, William, how are you doing today, buddy? Uh, good. Uh, I just actually got back from a camping trip. Um, been trying to de-stress, decompress, and get my self-care back in order so I can perform and be at my best for uh, the coming months here. <laughs> yeah, what's uh, cool, man, is, is that – yeah, go ahead. And, and what's uh, cool, good. you've been doing the Doomer – I've been doing it for almost two years straight now. <laughs> well, I was going to say it's the Doomer Bloomer pot. Yeah, the Doomer Bloomer podcast is all about uh, self care and and self treatment and improving one's life and the life lessons that your guests share with you, uh, which can help the listener. And that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? So, uh, what's going to happen for for about a uh, eight, seven or eight days is I'll be guest hosting a couple of episodes. I think we've got two or three episodes that are locked in and maybe you'll add another one for me, but basically give it, give, uh, give some cross promotion here. Let's, let's talk about some of the history of the Doomer Bloomer podcast. What made you want to do that podcast or do a podcast in the first place? What, how did it all come to be? Uh, Will? Uh, well, the Doomer Bloomers was a brainchild of myself and my friend John Wynn, as he likes to go uh, by on the podcast. And uh, really, it was a way for me to uh, cure my insomnia at first, uh, because I, I'm a I'm a type of person who has a lot of things on the go all the time and. Uh, it's sometimes hard for me to sleep at night cause I just ha have all these ideas running multiple tracks in my brain at the same time. And, uh, I like to be busy, but not, you know, you know, not like overrun. Um, so the, the podcast was a way right. to, um, you know, get our voice out there and provide a platform for people who don't necessarily have a voice. You know, the unstated mission is to uh, talk about the hero's journey and find the doomer bloomers out there uh, who are maybe in a darker or, a, you know, not so great place, uh, but just need a little bit of tools and help and support uh, to get on the other side to becoming a bloomer. Um, and that's the type of... Uh, audience and the type of listener and the type of people that we're looking for we're really trying to build a community of people uh trying to better themselves better their lives uh you know whether you're in entrepreneurship or just you know work in a regular job that's you know that's what it's all about right trying to be, become a better human being at the end of the day when you the term doom or bloomer when i did your show um it's an interesting term that I, I don't think I really had heard before and it's spelled doomer D O O M E R and then bloomer, the traditional bloomer, but it's almost like it could be spelled doom D O O M or O R bloom, you know, doom or <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's, it's like depending on your perspective of where you're at in your life, you could feel like you're in impending doom, especially with these past, you know, 16 or 18 months we've all experienced worldwide um, together as, as a world community, there is a feeling of doom. And so it's, it's, it's an interesting thing of how do you go from that? And people had problems before 16 or 18 months ago, the world wasn't perfect 16 or 18 months ago either. You know what I mean? So how do people go from that feeling of, man, my life's not on track. I don't feel like I'm doing what I should be doing. I wish I was doing something else. I wish I lived somewhere else. I wish I didn't have this relationship that I'm in or a lack of relationship. Uh, 
And then it's like, how do you turn that around to make things bloom? That's what I got from the, the show title. Am I on track there or is there more to it or is it different? Uh, well, I mean, the unofficial tagline for the show is we are the cure for COVID-19. And I mean that in the sense of like COVID-19 is not necessarily a physical disease. Sometimes, as you mentioned, it's permeated culture in such a way. It almost feels like that's the only thing everybody is talking about constantly. Um, and right. it, it was, it was, it's kind of a way like it, it was, the Doomer Bloomer, like a traditional Doomer, if you look up the term Doomer on, let's say, an urban dictionary, uh, it's generally defined as somebody in their mid to late 20s. Uh, they're either uh, hardcore addicted to some substances, whether that be drugs, alcohol, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then they they have an ex existential dread or existential view that the world is never going to get better. Um, and then on the opposite side of the coin, mm. a bloom a bloomer is somebody who has uh, basically again turned their life around and became uh, more of more on the sunnier side of life. Uh, and I just combined them or. John suggested that we combine these two terms or these two opposing ideas, kind of like the yin and yang. So like the, the dark interspersed with the light. And we all have that right. shadow, like Carl Jung calls it the shadow. So a true doomer bloomer is somebody who has fully integrated the darker or the deeper depths of themselves and have been through that hero's journey, the dark pit of despair, and come out the other side uh, a better, more complete person, if you will. Um, so I, I don't really, um, like I don't pigeonhole the term, especially when you look at the logo. There's so many different symbolisms there. Um, if you get doom or bloom out of the title, then that's what doom or bloomer means to you. Um, it, it can be interpreted sure. in very many different ways. It's, there's no one way or one correct way, uh, to look at it in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, when you mentioned the logo and, and I remember, I purchased one of your shirts, which I'm sure I'll wear during the podcast that I'm the guest host of. That's the other reason, folks, while we're doing this kind of cross promotion, because like I said, I'll I'll be uh, Will's going to take a, a week off or so, and I'm going to guest host uh, some episodes. I believe we have a, a podcast herself, Amanda, will be on one of the shows uh, that I'll be guest hosting, and and another uh, gentleman. So I'm looking forward to this and keeping the spirit of the show going. Um, and, uh, Will, you mentioned the insomnia thing. Is that something you're still dealing with? I don't know if you want to talk about that, but I know a lot of people suffer from that. I've had some bouts uh, of it, not not prevalent, but I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I occasionally go through bouts of insomnia. It's better now since I've been medicated uh, for uh, for my, my bipolar disorder. Um, but uh, mm, right. I still I still go through occasional occasional periods where I don't sleep very well or 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 sleep very much. I'm kind of a light sleeper uh, to begin with. Um, but lately yeah. things that things have calmed down or calmed down. But you know, as like I say, I'm a big big proponent of the Tao Te Ching, and there are calms, and then there are or storms and we're always cycling through calms and storms right um you know we don't ever cure life like life is managed and um we mm. don't we don't get rid of problems we just get better problems in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> i like that that's a great line that's so, a great line it, it, uh that reminds me of uh, mo money mo problems which was i think a big Big Papa, or Notorious B.I.G. song or mm -hmm. something. But uh, I think about the the sleep thing. Um, although insomnia, it's definitely a serious issue. Um, I have times when um, my sleep cycle will be off. I'm kind of going through that now. When I'm up till four or five in the morning, 
and then I'm waking up at like 10 30 or 11 in the morning so I'm getting somewhere between five and six hours of sleep as opposed to eight hours of sleep but I did read something once in a, in a book that um, was either about exercise or, or health or something and it, it said that the human for the most part uh, your body doesn't necessarily want to subscribe to a standard you know you're you're awake for 16 hours and you're going to go to sleep for eight hours and it's going to be the same routine day in and day out you know for the rest of your life your body is going to have like a kind of a 26 hour cycle or the way that i explained it was it's basically natural to have some nights where you get less sleep and some nights where you get more sleep now that's not the same as having insomnia where you're not sleeping for several days on end don't get me wrong but if you have some nights where like, hey, I got four hours of sleep for a night or even two or three, but you function, uh, that might be OK. It's OK not to have a perfect sleep schedule is just my little point here. That's all. Yeah, like uh, it's summertime right now. Uh, so my sleep schedule is a little more like la lackadaisical. Um, but generally speaking, I try to keep it the same like 10 at night and then I try to be up by six in the morning, but it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but uh, it works for me. If I keep to a regular routine, I, I generally perform better. Um, but there is no, yeah. there's no cookie cutter options in my opinion. Um, that's why like when I, you know, get different, when I talk to different people or different guests on the show, I try to get as much, varied opinions about different topics as possible because just because something works for somebody won't necessarily mean that it's going to work for somebody else right um like the last episode we were talking Correct. about how medit meditation uh can help you snap out of uh depressions um or like having a decent morning routine can help you get over uh long-term depressive cycles um but if you're in a deep depression, sometimes it, it's it's hard to 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 snap yourself out of it just by you know doing regular things. It really depends on on where you are in that depression. Um, so, right. But, there was something I saw recently, Will. That was like um, it was something about like anxiety. Um, and basically the, the, the statement was, you know, people feel like they have anxiety and sometimes they go to a doctor and get a pill for anxiety. But it's like, wait a minute, um, maybe you're anxious about something that's wrong in your life. For instance, if you have a job that you can't stand and you have anxiety, sure, you can take a pill for the anxiety, which might numb the feeling. However, you still have that job that you can't stand. Or you're still living right. in a city that you don't like, or you've outgrown, or you're not making enough money, or you're in a poor relationship with a spouse, or you don't talk to your kids. So sometimes society has lent, lent itself to, well, if you exercise more, uh, or maybe you eat less chocolate, or you eat more chocolate, or if you or if you take this pill, then you won't feel your anxiety. But if you kind of examine why am I feeling anxiety? It's because I have a bad relationship with my spouse. I have a bad relationship with my parents, bad relationship with my kids, bad relationship with my boss. I hate my job. And if you actually took the time, it, it might be tougher to say, well, maybe I got to quit this job and find a new one or find a new one before I quit the old one. Or maybe I have to see a therapist with uh, my spouse, or maybe we have to split up. But but sometimes you have to actually hit those, uh, find the core of the problem rather than try to numb it. Um, whether, you know what I mean? Well, that would be called a band-aid solution. I think a lot of the times we get offered band-aid solutions for a lot of deeper set issues. Um, and, and like I said, like I was talk alluding to or talking about earlier is that, we all have that shadow or that darker self inside of us. And if we start pushing that down or pushing that away, 
uh, it can come back and bite you in the ass in really unexpected ways. Um, you know, I know, I know for myself, like if you have unprocessed trauma that you haven't dealt with, um, it can really come back and hit and hit you really hard unexpectedly. Um, so it, it's, 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 it's better, like you said, to actually face your problems, even though, uh, right. it may be hard, may be hard in the moment. It may be hard on the day to day, but it's just like anything. I mean, how do they make, how do they make better steel? They keep forging it by fire until it gets tempered. Right. And as a human being, uh, we're not yeah. designed to, we're not designed to just stand by and, and rust, right. You have to keep tempering yourself. You have to try and at least make an effort to improve and, and get better. Right. And, uh, it, it doesn't, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's not an overnight process. It's just like, um, I have, you know, I have these issues with my spouse or I have these issues with depression. It's not like you just flip a switch the next day you're fine. Right. It's, it's a gradual mm. step by step process. And it's not like you take two steps forward and then, you know, another step back. It's, it's just, everybody progresses at their own time and their own pace. And there's no one right way or wrong way to do anything in my opinion, you know, so it's all individual. You mentioned, um, although, uh, it's individual, but you mentioned a partner, a friend, uh, John, could you mm -hmm. tell me more about the, your, your friendship and did you guys mean school? Were you guys, uh, childhood friends and and what's his contribution to the show and if you want to send a shout out to him or, or see how he's doing but please go right ahead uh i met john uh in 2011 so mm -hmm. in september it'll be 10 years ago uh i met john when i was doing a uh, exchange program in quebec uh in the other side of canada uh, I was learning French and teaching English, and then he came into our friend group because he was dating uh, one of the girls in the program, and then we just kind of bonded over um, just like ideas, business ideas, uh, life experiences, and he, yeah, he was just a genuinely a, like, like a genuine person, like a very, just like, uh, candid to the point, like, this is my life. And, you know, this is, this is who I am, accept me or don't. Um, he's kind of a no bullshit, mm. no BS kind of individual. Um, and we kind of just kept that spark a of a friendship. Shooter, as they say. Yeah. Like we just kind of kept that spark of a friendship going, um, he like I went back and seen him a couple times or at least once in Quebec after I moved away. And then he ultimately moved out West to Vancouver around 2015 um, to pursue more, more business opportunities out West. Uh, ultimately he ended up in Edmonton, Alberta. And then I kind of, well, I didn't, I wouldn't say like I, twisted his arm he was quite he was quite he was quite um quite interested in starting a podcast uh and we initially started it just between the two of us uh again to kind of just uh make a commentary on the state of the world at the time like especially during uh it would have been like in the like the heyday of the the trump era and like how how gonzo Hmm. the the political culture and what we call clown world order had become and and we were basically right. saying collectively that, that it's okay to be a moderate person you don't have to be an extreme left person and you don't have to be an extreme right person it's okay to have a more nuanced opinion on things and take the individual events or the individual uh consequences in stride and make an informed opinion without bringing extreme left ideas or extreme left, 
extreme right ideas. And then there just, you know, there doesn't seem to ever be a proper discord discourse or discord on any, any topic anymore. It's like you're, you're either labeled as an extreme left person or an extreme right person. Um, and your Facebook feed has just become an echo chamber of, of, of your existence. Um, with the Doomer Bloomer podcast, like, and he, he's the one who came up with, with the name, you know, because he would have classically defined himself as a Doomer in his mid 20, mid 20 period, late 20 period. And, and both of us, you know, and I can't really speak for, for all of his experiences, but, um, you know, it's, it's been kind of a rough road for, for himself and myself to kind of get where we're going, you know, but like I was saying earlier, you're, 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 you're tempered or you're forged or made stronger by that temperance, uh, throughout your, your life's path. And I would consider John uh, one of my closest and most trusted friends. Um, he's kind of taken a bit of a step back from the podcast just because he wants to focus more on his business, which I respect. Um, but he is also the type of, type of person that once he comes back and wants to be more creative, um, he will put his heart and soul into whatever he's doing. So. He's just uh, generally, like I said, that's a great testimony to friendship, man. (laughs) Yeah, I, um, yeah, probably gonna give him a call tonight. Actually, see what he's up to. He just just celebrated his birthday, so I should wish him some birthday birthday wishes. So, well, wish him a happy birthday. And and I think (laughs) it's interesting is here I am in the United States. You guys are up in Canada, and uh, you know, for for many Americans. Canada, it's kind of a mystery, to, to yeah. be honest. I mean, we, we kind of get our our sound bites, like we get our Michael Myers and we get our Catherine O'Hara's and we, we uh, enjoy hockey, uh, at least I do. Uh, although Tampa Bay here in Florida uh, was successful in winning a couple of championships. Um, but most of the players are Canadian, so, you know. And um, we... We enjoy the uh, O Canada song. It's a great national anthem. It's a wonderful song. Um, so I, I think there's an interesting th- dynamic with America and our, our neighbors to both the North and the South, meaning Mexico, that with Mexico, it's it's almost, I mean, you talk about the, the wall and who's going to pay for this wall. And there's almost this, this tension with Mexico, but every once in a while, someone wants to go down there and party it up for a week and don't drink the water. So there's kind of this condescending attitude with Canada, at least from my perspective, Will, and I am French Canadian myself, uh, heritage wise. So, but there's a bit of a a vagueness uh, to me and I could be wrong, but when America thinks of Canada, it's, we don't quite know what to think or quite know what to have an opinion and there's no you know what I mean there's no set of rules that say well you're an American and you think of Canada this way it's almost like we don't know what to really to think or to say just kind of thinking out loud here you know what I mean so well, um it's it's funny you should say that because the original name for the podcast uh it was going to be called the maple truths or like the maple truth and it was supposed to be a Canadian perspective on American uh politics culture and society um Mm. but we kind of ultimately went with something that was more um universally uh able to to grow whereas i didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves into like we're the canadians that just talk about american politics and stuff Uh, i kind of wanted to be more diverse diverse in opinion so there's still an element uh i think of that Canadian identity. Uh, and we do often speak to it every once in a while when we are discussing, uh, discussing different issues that come to light. Um, but that was, that was then this is now. And, you know, I think what we've ultimately created uh, long-term is more relatable 
Um, I think everybody goes through periods of, of darker, uh, less vibe, like vibrational wise, less energy, a deeper, darker energy. It's not to say that, uh, it's bad energy. It's just a different energy and you have to acknowledge it and use it in a different way than you would be it if you're ahead at a higher or a lighter vibrational frequency. You know, they're just energies, but they're equal and opposite to each other. Um, so that's how I kind of view the, the dichotomy or the, the contrast, if you will, in the long term. <laughs> well, I think that's a great, that's a great point and a, a great point and a great approach because, you know, I mean, look, I've watched a lot of Tony Robbins stuff and, and the gentleman, um, he passed away. Uh, he was a really good guy, a public speaker. Throwing a blank on his name, of course, but um, they're uh, Dyer, Wayne Dyer. They're, oh, yeah. I think with, yeah, if you're talking right. about self help in particular, yeah, Wayne Dyer was really good. Uh, but if you're talking about self help and motivation, um, you know, it's a thing where without acknowledging, oh, cool, without, without acknowledging that uh, sometimes life is just tougher than other times for the individual. Mm-hmm. And if you can't just say, hey, look, the next six years or the next two years may not be the, the, the easiest time of my life or this might be the tough time or I'm going through a tough time and I don't want to. If, if, person, if people don't acknowledge that and tip their hat to it and just try to put a, a you know, it's just jumping jacks your way out of a, of a bad mood, it's not always going to be effective. So I think what's cool about yourself, Will, uh, that you're very open and honest about, hey, I'm taking on some issues and this podcast serves to connect with people on a level that they don't have to feel like uh, the perfect sunshine meme. You know, it, it doesn't always have to be Skittles in the park every single moment. You know, there can be times when you use that uh, different frequency to accomplish great things and to to make things happen or even set the table for things that might happen three or four years later. So. Um, it's been great talking to you about this, Will. Is there anything else you want to say about yourself, your history, or the show uh, before we prepare for this week of guest uh, hosting spots for myself? Uh, I just want to say that if you are listening on YouTube or any of the other platforms, Spotify, uh, Apple, or Google, we're basically on all the platforms. Uh, we're very approachable. You know what I mean? Um like I, I don't do this right. in a vacuum just to hear my own voice. Uh, I'm really the main reason or the main purpose, if there is you know a purpose to all of this, is to connect with real people in real life doing real things uh, in all different diverse niches, industries, and backgrounds. Uh, we have the I'm on Twitter, the Doomer Podcast, on the Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and we have a Discord server uh, set up as well. It's free. There's lots of resources in the Discord server for people to check out. If you're trying to start your own podcast or start your own YouTube channel, uh, there are also resources uh, you can check out on, on the Doomer Bloomer website. Um, and if yeah, if you're if you're just surfing the internet or surfing the web and you got nothing better to do. Just go to www.thedoomerbloomerpodcast.com, all one word. And all of the history of the episodes, we're up to uh, almost, yeah, this will be the 40, this will be the 45th episode uh, overall in the two years. Um, so we have quite a history built up on a lot of different topics and a lot of different speakers in a lot of different areas. So I'm not the type of person that says, hey, watch it from start to finish. Uh, kind of choose your own adventure because that's what right. life is. It's not about uh, following exactly in the footsteps of somebody else. It's about uh, connecting the dots in your own life and choosing the path that works best uh, for you. And then, you know, maybe taking on uh, some of the the benefit of mistakes of others uh, to ultimately become, like I said, a more integrated person of the shadow, the shadow realm and the light. So we're not just uh, 
an in like not an incomplete person we're, we're a person who's who who shows up who is real who is genuine um whether you're going through a bad shitty period or not um i'm always i'm always approachable um and ready to be of service that's what i really have to say <laughs> Well, Will, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Enjoy your week off. I'll be happy to take these co-hosting uh, or guest spots, guest hosting spots. I'm looking forward to meeting the guests and keeping the momentum going. And, of course, you do have that T-shirt store. So if people are intrigued by the design uh, you mentioned, how do they find the T-shirt uh, with the logo on it? I believe the link is uh, Teespring at Doomer Bloomers. I will put a link to it into the description of all the videos, uh, so it'll be like prominent. Uh, if you know cool. if you're you're on the website or on on any of the platforms, you'll, it's the first thing you'll be able to see. All right, Will Summer, man, so good to talk to you again, buddy, and. Uh, Thank you for the those that have watched this on subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. Those that have listened to it on Doomer Bloomberg podcast, uh, Mike Messier saying thanks for me and Will, and uh, we look forward to having a great couple of uh, guest host podcasts. Thanks, Will. Looking forward to it, buddy. Cheers.